Hi guys, I'm Kevin Secor and welcome to this digital download on the ICSA Level 4 requirements for combat psychology. Now, whether or not you're looking at this download as simply a continuation in your certification track as you pursue higher levels in learning, or whether you're looking at it as a standalone product to supplement your existing training, I believe that the information contained in this download is among the very most important. Namely, it's the ability to manage to control and to focus our fear so that we can externally project passivity and neutrality of compliance and respect while internally maintaining and bolstering and readying our sense of aggression. It is the so-called prey to predator switch. This is one of the domains that is the most overlooked. It is the least understood and there is a significant amount of research out there to, to supplement everything that I'll say in here. But yet it's one of the, 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 the elements of self-defense training that's really not sufficiently developed in most schools. It's been something that's been a lifetime interest to me, something I've, I've applied directly, pragmatically, working as a, both as a, as a doorman and in personal security. Uh, it's something that I practice in my daily life, and as such I'll try to give you as many exercises as possible that you too can apply in your daily life. But ultimately it's an awareness and it's a, and a, a willingness to take seriously this fundamental notion that tactically we can improve our situation enormously. We have to consider that an aggressor has chosen the time of the attack in most situations, their time of readiness. They've had the advantage of surprising you. They might have weapons, they might have superior numbers. All of the odds are already stacked against you in that sense. This is one way of taking just a few of those odds and stacking them back in our favor. Of counter ambushing, if you will, the ambusher. And it is so important, and it is something so close to my heart, I will try to give you the most sequential, clear, and logical progression. I will try to outline some of the pitfalls that I've encountered and, and wasted time on, in my opinion. And I'll try to give you the very essence of the most important work that you can do, showing you how you can integrate it in your day-to-day -day life, and then how you can test it in your scenario training, and your, your, your school training, and then ultimately on the street. This is vital information. I can't encourage you enough to go through it multiple times to give it the attention it deserves. Let's get into it, guys. Whether or not we want to admit it, deception and the ability to detect it are pillars of human and animal communication alike. The advantages of reliably communicating are obvious. Humans have depended on their intelligence, their ability to make tools and weapons, and their capacity to hunt, to gather, and to fight in teams in order to achieve their dominance. And all of these skills are improved by strong clear communication. Communication allows us to express pain, our need for help, and our sense of togetherness. But the ability to suppress and to manipulate these same messages could also have huge advantages. In fact, social psychologist Charles Bond said the ability to lie and the corresponding ability to detect that deceit evolved into nothing less than an evolutionary arms race. Consider this. The advantages of deceiving our fellow man are in fact so strong and the trait is so dominant that one study on heredity found the strongest trait in family lineages was their tendency towards honesty or lying. The dominance of deceit is apparent in religious and civil laws. We're taught that lying is bad. We're cautioned about the consequences of lying in doctrine and in fables. And dishonesty carries this mantle of shame and punishment because the reality is that while honesty might be something we expect in relationships or that we want in business dealings or transactions with professionals or with experts, it's not something we should realistically expect in war or in a fight for our life.
our program is going to consist of four essential components. First, we're going to revisit assertiveness and aggression training. We laid a very rudimentary foundation for this in our Level 3 Combat Psych module on spinal loading, but here we're going much deeper. Second, we're going to explore the rule of deceit, both how to detect it and how to implement it combatively, debunking and simplifying a lot of the notions along the way. Third, we're going to examine conflict control, giving you an assortment of new tools not covered elsewhere. This is a great complement for our 20 Steps to Verbal Mastery program if you've already seen it. Finally, we're going to work specifically on forging our duality, that prey to predator switch, learning how to be quietly strong while smoldering with internal strength. <laughs>